in my audio casts, which is a term that I coined maybe five, six years ago, it was my idea to simply make audio files instead of having to spend all this time in my studio, all this time on my actual studio computers to do all kinds of editing. I also felt it allowed a person to really build an audio cast without having to pay for a podcast program. For a while I did that, but I didn't see any benefits of it. I didn't see any marketing of it, and I didn't see how it was going to really help people unless they really had a huge following. So what I felt like doing was just building audio casts that could begin, and then eventually I would be able to move it over to a podcast network. Also, creating podcasts does require different software, different techniques than just creating a video. So that's me. But it's also other people. Most people know how to snap a video on their phone. Most people know how to make an audio file on their phone. But even doing that doesn't automatically set it up for an audio cast or a radio broadcast or anything like that. And when I talk about these things, I'm talking about myself. But that doesn't really matter to you, does it? What matters to you is you. What do you have in your life that you can talk about? What do you have in your life that you can work about? What do you have that can make you a living? That's the real question of my audio cast program. What I'm saying is, who are you? What do you do? And how do you share it with people? You see, who you are and what you do is important to you. But how you make a living is really important to you because the living you make is what provides for you, your children, your family, your future, the elderly people you have to care for in your life, including your grandma, your grandpa, or any type of parent that becomes elderly. And that is openly on your life and responsibility. America is very poor at caring for the elderly. Absolutely. We are taught in this world, and it came about in the 50s, that people wanted to move away from their families. They didn't really want to have their intimate relationships with a new life partner in a three or four generation household where everybody could hear them and everybody could watch them and everybody could comment. It's true. It gave us much healthier relationships to have those separate spaces. It also opened up the door for a lot more abuses. So when someone is being emotionally abused, psychologically abused, physically abused, sexually abused, it wasn't always visible to the family. So there's obviously pros and cons of everything. But in life, we have to talk about what is right and what is real at this time in American living. And at this time in American living, we are off track with God. At this time in American living, we are off track with our taking care of our environment. At this time in American living, we are domesticating animals that should never be domesticated. And we are not domesticating the ones that could really help us to grow and understand God's world. But more importantly, could feed us over time. The people who keep chickens and hens and build their own eggs really do have a benefit. The people that care for geese often do have extra meat if they're caring for the geese appropriately. But I don't know what the laws are on geese, and I'm not suggesting you go out and kill one, because I don't like the idea of having pluck feathers and do all that. I never passed that in science class. Thank God I had a cheerleader who loved to do that as a science partner in the 7th grade when we had to do all that shit. And I think all the way up through the 10th grade when we had to do that stuff. But that's not the point. I just don't have the stomach for it. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth about what is real for us, but what is real for someone else is something else entirely. My point is that in America, we have to get back to basics. Getting back to basics is one of the Biden's campaign. Biden's back to basics makes sense to me. Biden's back to basics says, first we have to do is get this uh, illness under control. Bottom line, we're not going to get it under control. Two reasons for that, because not everybody cares about other people, and not everybody wants to tell everybody that they have COVID. Because, you see, in our lives, in our histories, in our organizations, and truly throughout our cities, privacy is our right. The privacy of our finances, the privacy of our banking, the privacy of our legacies, the privacy of our medical rights, the privacy of our sexuality, the privacy of our bodies, everything over that area is private. So we're not going to start this Dr. Seuss stars upon Lars type of living. We're not going to start putting on some sort of badge that says, I have COVID, stay away from me by six feet. We're not going to be doing that. But the people who have COVID do have a responsibility to keep their masks on, to be careful with the people that they're living with, and openly to be cherishing those moments of time when they're still living. 